Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. We're gonna have a great show today. Dr. Che Trejo is gonna be here. We're gonna talk about receiving high-risk calves and their management. Stay tuned. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of Resflor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, welcome to the show. Uh, it's going to be a great show today. We're going to talk about high-risk calf management and receiving. We have an expert here that has we've had we've known each other a long time. Long time, yeah. Dr. Che Trejo, uh, who's a veterinarian uh, in Florida, uh, has has owned receiving calf and buying calf stations and businesses in in the southeast and put a lot of cattle together with just a wealth of information when it comes to things that we go through getting cattle put together managing these high-risk calves and and getting them off to a good start so thanks for being here thanks dan thanks yep. so let's start out with because as we were planning this it was you know there's different the the point of purchase and and what goes on there can be so important yeah, and that's a, I think that's an area that we really don't focus on a lot, but for the individual producer to have that relationship with his buyer is key, and we want to get them through the system as fast and as calmly as possible, and so spending some time and effort focusing with your buyer is key to that calf success. Yeah, and, and obviously you have a lot of experience with this, um, but, but as we start to put these cattle together, understanding where they come from, what they're going through at that auction market, uh, what they're going through at the order buyer, and the process and that can be can be really, really good and it can be yeah, really, really bad. Yeah, that's right. So, on, you know, the ideal world, if we're buying from sale barns, is directly to pick them up from the sale barn and get them to your place. And that's that's a hard thing to do in a lot of parts of the world because we have to pull from a bunch of different sale barns. And so we use the order buying system. and. And then it becomes, to me, how fast we can get them out of the order buying system and not let them sit in those places. Just There's a lot of transient things that are happening. Those typically are high stress environments. There's a lot of noise stress. And so the shorter time we can spend there, the better the calf will be. Yeah. And, and so other things then, you know, obviously the transportation, all of these things, meld into that experience of going to the, what I call the kind of the change of address yeah. of what's going to happen. It's kind of like a, a country kid going through the airport terminals and, and then landed in New York city. Right. Yeah. And so how do we, I mean, how do you kind of approach that in a, in a systems approach before they get to your place? You know, the, I'm, I don't want to just harp on speed of exit from that system because we can focus on those systems and make things better. We've all been to different order buying outfits and they are different across the spectrum. But focusing on fresh water supplies and good hay provisions while they're there and the least amount of sorting and moving and clamming around we can do on them, the better. You know, a lot of guys will look at split loads between producers if we can get some cattle shipped out on a daily basis but i would i would sure push your order buyer to ship what he has for you that day and get them out of that system where they don't spend a night there and have to incur whatever's coming in the next day yeah and it goes back to that um the reason why people pay more for uh lot load size groups yep and why we pay more for evenness and, and things of that nature is because if they're even and we have a full load, 
they're going to get turned around. That's right. And, and the dollars that we pay for calves matters how fast we put it together, right? So you might, and I'm not saying don't be frugal, but sometimes it's better to add a dollar or two to get the cattle bought than it is to peck at them all week long and end up paying it on the health parameters later. Yeah, great information. We got them off and rolling. We got our calves procured and there we have the point of sale covered. When we come back, we're going to talk more about what happens when they get to your place. You're watching Doc Talk with Dr. Che Trejo. We'll be right back. DNA Dialogue is brought to you by Igenity Beef, powered by Neogen. When we have samples that fail when they come through the lab, there's a lot of common themes that arise. I would always tell people if you're sampling at birth to make sure that that calf is completely dry because one of the biggest things that cause contamination is when the placental DNA from the dam is still left on that calf. So that when you take the TSU sample, you're actually capturing not only that calf's DNA, but the dam itself. And a lot of times that could lead to a failed sample. Another key to success when you're taking a sample on an older female is to avoid punching through the tattoo ink that may already be there from her bangs vaccination. And lastly, TSUs can be stored at room temperature for up to 12 months. One thing that we like to avoid though, is once you take those samples, make sure that you don't just throw them on the dash of the pickup truck because the sun beating down on them and things like that can degrade the DNA. If you're storing them for longer than 12 months, we do recommend that you store them in a freezer, but not necessarily the freezer in your kitchen. We like for them to be in a deep freeze, say in the garage or out in the shop, because that way it doesn't have that auto frost and thaw that could also lead to the degradation of the DNA. I feel the use of genomics for cattle producers will be more widespread than we're seeing it now. I, I think we're just in the beginning stages of it. And I think a lot of people just see the side of the replacement females and increasing the predictability and future use of your females because we all know the cost that it takes to develop those in, into a cow. The large side of it that folks miss out on is the use of genomics to predict the product that they're making every year and in that I mean their calves. The feed yards are constantly after a more predictable product, a more predictable days on feed, a more predictable outcome on the rail. Through genomics, Genomics were able to accomplish a lot faster what used to take multiple generations. Igenity Beef. Contact your Neogen Territory Manager to test today. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Supremo, the fast that lasts. Supremo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Supremo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Zuprevo.com. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson and we're here with Dr. Che Trejo, who is a veterinarian. He's a tech services veterinarian from Merck Animal Health that allows him a platform to help a whole bunch of us veterinarians um, in our day-to-day grind and, and issues and and gets to see a lot of different operations but has a wealth of experience that he brought to this job uh, through his experience in in putting cattle together running his own operation his own veterinary practice and things to that nature and and so now we're talking about we got him to your place so now what are the things that i need to think about as these new calves come off the truck and, and where we're going to put them and what we're going to provide them. Yeah, there's a lot of thought that needs to go into the receiving pen. It's, if you think about it, it's the place that gets the most traffic. Every calf that comes through your place is staying usually a night there. And so those, those creature comforts become all the more important. And where that pen is positioned is also important. Like 
it's very common for us to do things that are convenient, like have our treatment pens or hospital pens near the chute, near the receiving cattle, and we don't ever want to introduce new cattle to sick cattle on their first night's stay. So we, we can put some bad bugs early exposure to those calves can occur with, without having preventive measures in place. So I really focus location, location, location. And then the other key thing I always say is you want a welcoming environment. Right. And, and with that, you know, it's like you picking your hotel room. You don't want to stay off Bourbon Street in New Orleans if you're expecting to sleep. <laughs> so we we have to think about that. And if there's dogs barking, feed trucks running, things that are occurring all hours of the day, that's really not appropriate for those cattle. They need a place that they feel, feel welcome and we can take stress off of them and they can kind of breathe a minute. Yep, get rest. Yep kick their shoes off and stretch out and uh, recover. That's right. If if you're bringing them to a place that's full of mud and it's cold and wet and they can't lay down and they've been in transit for a long time, we've, we're just adding bad on top of bad. Sure. So, well, keeping with the hotel theme then, um, we, we probably want to have water bottles and, and snacks set that's out as it. well, right, when the calves get there. Yeah, and so cleanliness becomes uh, probably the most important thing when we're talking about those systems. And, and you have to think about it. If we don't do almost daily cleaning in a receiving area, then we're exposing each, each additional animal to whatever bugs are in that water trough. And same thing with the feed trough. We need to make sure those feed bumps are clean and been disinfected. and they're Because it's hard to have multiple receiving areas for all the different pens that are associated on your place. So it's typically a one to two pin system that right needs a lot of care yeah and i and i see it too and you know you the it, you know you go to your your hospitals your intensive care unit right. and this is your your neonatal uh you know care unit of and, and so your levels of hygiene and, and cleanliness those are your i mean you should you do it in everywhere but these two need a special focus yeah that's right so anything else that, uh, you know, location of the pens away from hospital, away from business, fresh feed, fresh water? Yeah, in the, in the south, we also have to consider shade and, and also where y'all are, are, you know, it's times a year those receiving pens can be unshaded and hot and they're going to be through there in the middle of the day. So we tend to see, a, I tend to see more heat stress early in the year in that May, June time frame when cattle still have some hair on them, it will hit some high temps and high humidity, so shade, shade's important there. Um, and again, just that focus of we want them to feel welcome when they get off the truck, I think is, if you keep that in mind, that's going to really guide you on how to set up a lot of things. Well, that's a great segue into our acclimation in the next segment. So yep. we're going to take a break. We're here with Dr. Che Trejo. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be right back. In the livestock industry, castration is a common practice to ensure proper herd management. All methods are painful, regardless of the age of the animal. At Solvit, we could not ignore the clear industry need for better castration solutions. So we developed Lidoband, a novel lidocaine impregnated elastrator, addressing the pain associated with band castration. It provides local anesthesia throughout the castration process. Lidoband, a small device that can make a big difference. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver, you rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meat is Cattle Vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. 
Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Che Trejo. He's a veterinarian, lives in Florida, uh, works at Merck Animal Health, helping in technical services for veterinarians uh, all across the Southeast and beyond. Um, but he has a real specialty for putting together high risk calves because he's run his own operation, his own practice and, and his experiences. So, you know, we, we, you know, we, we wanna get into these talks about the four color ads and antibiotics and vaccines which are necessary and important tools yep. but but the stockmanship and acclimation and and husbandry and that cannot cannot be overridden or made up for by by management in a bottle no that that's right i i um i spend probably most of my time not telling people what the right medicine is to give but what the right management tool is to use and right. yeah that's uh that's a big focus and getting an acclimation this is kind of a learning area for us over the last 10 or 15 years and there's been some key people I think in our industry helped to go down this path and I think still it's a learning environment you know one thing I struggle with is uh, I'm a, I'm a, I want to get vaccines in those cattle as fast as possible but yet sometimes we need to delay to get uh, those cattle acclimated and I still struggle with that which is the right way to way to go there but we always acclimate and whether that's, you know, if a set of calves that has come in, let's say on a Sunday and you know they were bought six or seven days ago, then getting a vaccine in them isn't as critical as if I'm getting them day one and getting them in them because some of that challenge, they've already seen it now. So with that, rest and acclimation is probably more important than Russian vaccination. So I think we have to take each situation differently. Yeah. So kind of walk me through what, what you like to do with acclimating cattle. And, and what we mean by acclimating is really getting them used to you, right? Yeah, that's right. You're, you're, you're basically teaching them that you can take stress away from them and you're not uh, endangering them. And we typically will do this in a, uh, a few acres. You know, I, I think a big paddock, it's harder to do because they can get away from you some, but also in a small pen, it's hard enough for you to get away from them enough to uh, to make them feel comfortable. And this certainly changes with the kind of calves you get. Obviously, the the Floridas and the Brahma influence cattle are a little more fractious, and we kind of have to be aware from that. But we really are putting a presence in the pen that's taking pressure off of them and stopping erratic movement. And that right. that occurs day one. We want to kind of give them guidance. I'm not really trying to force them to a feed bunk or force them to a water trough. It's more, I'm in the pen with you and you can be okay with me in here. <laughs> Don't jump over the back rail. Please. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and sometimes you've got to get way away from yeah. it to have that occur. So I, I, it takes somebody with patience to do it. And I'm not always the right one for the <laughs> job, but uh, I think the right person is key on this. And so sometimes that's somebody in your organization who has more of a quiet personality and, and has a little time that they can spend doing it. Yeah. So, so after you start to get them uh, used to you being in the pen and not scattering and, and things of that nature, will you then start to put them through some, some exercises or, or just some cues or some orders to kind of acclimate that, hey, I'm, I'm here to, you're here to listen to me now, go yeah. from, from a friend to a teacher? That's right. Yeah. And, and these exercises are really short intervals. You know, I'm, I'm going to say it's between five and 15 minutes is about all we're spending in there. But, and that might be once a day, it might be multiple times. It just depends on the group. You can, you can really see a frantic group once you have settled them down, they'll pick back up that frantic behavior and you might have to go back in there another time or two during the day. But, you know, really we will look for those few key animals that start the negative movement and we'll focus on them. And so that is just really applying uh, or, or giving them enough space that they settle down in our comfort. And things like when they do start that negative motion, riding with or at an angle away from that movement to slow them down. And pretty much the group will follow once you get those few in line. Perfect. Great information for us on how to transition those cattle to under our care and guidance. Uh, we're here with Dr. Che Trejo. We'll come back after these messages.
The cost of an open cow these days is very expensive. It's hard at times to dedicate a half a day or a whole day to leave your practice to go palpate cows. And so Alertus Test has helped speed the process up of getting preg rates back to the owners. And so free up time for diagnostics or working in your clinic. It also will help generate revenue, not being on site to do the testing. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for it by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Che Trejo. Dr. Trejo is a veterinarian in Florida. He serves as a technical services veterinarian for Merck Animal Health. Um, but Dr. Che and I have go back many, many years. Um, when I had hair. When you had hair and <laughs> mine had color, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, uh, just veterinary medicine. If you don't know, is is one of those things of fellowship and and kindred uh, spirits and similar passions, and just appreciate all that you do for vet med. And, yes, same and here. It's it's just great. And um, so we get those calves there. We've we've acclimated them. You know, it's, you say it's not a one and done system. What are some of the things here that, that we're going to follow up on? Yeah, I think from that acclimation phase, just know that acclimation continues once they go out into their home pen or, or pasture. And it's some of those same pressure movements just in a larger space. So, again, I'm not really focusing on getting cattle up to the bunk or to a water system, but I want the cattle to kind of walk out of that receiving pen or acclimation pen into their home pen and not be a running force. And so sometimes that takes, you know, somebody walking in front of them with a horse. They'll typically trail or once they get out into that pasture, doing some of those same movements with them to guide them around the facility and get them calm. And then we roll into what's important the first few days and, you know, you got that bad nutritionist background so <laughs> that's right that's right my my conflict my constant <laughs> conflict of veterinary nutritionist yeah, yeah. I, I do think we've been on the same page the last 10 years of trying not to push cattle so fast initially that we try to kind of ramp them up and at a slower pace and I, I typically will do that um, I don't want to try to be messing up their stomach at the same time that I'm trying to get them over their BRD curve so I keep that in mind I want to I want to start them off slow on rations, and I just want to have a slow uptake through that first 30 days. And you know that time and consistency is probably the most important thing, as well as meeting their nutritional demands. But focusing on a consistent pattern on your feed delivery is key, that those cattle are creatures of habit. And my golden rule is always you need to be within 20 minutes on a time frame of, of when you feed that pen. And if that's at 6 o'clock in the morning, then it needs to be within 20, 20 minutes to 6 o'clock in the morning every day. So. It, it's amazing for me to watch cattle in a yard or whatever. And that feed truck will go by once, they don't get up. It goes by twice, they don't get up three times, four times. They know it's the fifth time. Yeah. And when it's coming the fifth time, they're up and they're waiting. Yep. And... And if it goes by, they get upset. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're like, oh, uh oh, I'm not getting fed. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, uh, and you can always see behaviors in cattle. They, if you get them out of their pattern, then it becomes hard to pull cattle. It becomes hard to navigate who's sick and who's not sick because you get them out of that mix. And so it becomes extremely, it becomes more work on you if you don't do the things that are important the small detail yeah and things break down but have a plan yep what's going to happen what's our backup 
the uh, feed delivery system or, or you know. Uh, days of processing, do we still have ability to get things fed at the right time that we're processing cattle? So all those little things become important. Huge uh, strategic plan. So any wrap up on these these high risk calves or anything that <laughs> any golden any golden nugget that that. Uh, Boy, I mean, going back to that fix in the bottle, I, I think we have to do things right on the animal health products that we use, but management, management, management is going to become more important as we look to get out of relying on antibiotics in the future and how we go forward. So I think really focusing on that welcoming environment is going to be key to success. Well, appreciate you. Appreciate you being on the show. We appreciate you watching the show. If you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Che Trejo, and we'll see you down the road. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow.